Alright, I'm trying something different right now. I'm not doing one of my, my company prints. I'm just doing kind of a fun print for my daughter. And and uh, I'm using 100% bad powder or old powder. Um, got the temps up to 173.8. And then I did a double perimeter. I think 200 micrometer offset. 170 um, hatch offset. And I can't remember what the other offset was. But I'm hoping that... I'll be able to get two perimeters that should center the edges and oh it's beginning so well we'll see I'm working on a project where basically I'm making a game for my daughter and it needs a hook and I didn't want to go and buy like a crappy hook I also didn't want to buy a big huge like metal hook it'd be just dangerous so I decided why not to use the printer. It'd be a good opportunity to explore some of the new um, laser hatching patterns and stuff. So I get uh, I talked a little bit with this to 3D Chimera, and they gave me some suggestions on how to how to use the uh, the laser pattern parameters that are in the Centrotech Central. So when you go to custom, like when you before you preview it, select custom. And then it allows you to change those parameters, notably like the hatch density, the hatch offset, and then also the the uh, perimeter offsets. You have to remember that when this thing centers, it places uh, a, a little like laser line all along the perimeter, and then it fills it all in. Well, that laser line does have a thickness, so you need to factor in the laser thickness, have an offset. If you double or triple the perimeters. Um, having to compensate for that thickness. You don't want it to overlap too much, but you also don't want it to be so spaced out that it doesn't help. Why would you do this? If you're using 80% old powder or 100% old powder, you need to change the laser parameters. There's just no way to center it without having major issues. If you just use the standard custom, if you just use the standard parameters. There's no like guidebook on how to do this. Like 3D Chimera gave me some a good a great starting point. In fact, their their numbers actually do work really well. Um, but I was just trying to fiddle with it a little bit since this print is is just sort of a fun little print. There's nothing crucial on the line here, and I used their parameters, and they were just slightly a little bit bigger than what I liked for all my company settings. Um, so I'm trying to adjust those parameters a little bit smaller so that hopefully I can. I can use what I did here on this test print on some of the company prints, which do need to be exact. Like they have to be just like the same thickness as the the standard settings. Otherwise, the parts don't interconnect; they don't fit together, and then it, they'll just be either fused together or they'll be too loose. So this is just my test run to try to try to some of the different parameters out. Anyway, you pull it out of the bed. I I scrubbed away on these guys for like five minutes. I purposely didn't speed up this video. Like if you've seen a lot of my other videos, I do a time lapse for all of the cleanup because if I'm extracting 150 models or something, you don't want to sit there and do it. But this is only six. And also, if you're interested in this product, this is like like a really good um, preview of what your life's gonna be. Um, it's not bad. Like here, I have six models, and two of them are reasonably sized. The other ones are kind of small, but it took five minutes to clean it up, and that included all three stages. I like to do three stages of where you use a regular brush, just sort of brush off all the big chunks and cake and clumps on it, and then you use a brass brush to um, to to just take a, remove any per particular surface. Like when you pull it off, sometimes there's a little bit of a surface to it, that like a little texture to it, and the brass brush really does a great job of just cleaning that up. So I use the electric toothbrush just to remove that extra little bit of powder that's sort of like, it just sort of clings to the side of it, and the metal toothbrush does a great job at removing that, and then also the toothbrush will get in those little nooks and crannies better than like a wire brush. I don't know if it's just little vibrations or whatever, but it just sort of, it just, it's like the best way to, to finish cleaning up that thing. And uh, when it's all done, it's good to go. You could go even further and try to polish it even more with sandpaper and stuff. The inside of that centered material is really nice.
Like it's, I'm actually kind of surprised. I've cut some apart because I just assume that there, there's like a layering in there. Like you'd see tree rings kind of like because it's it's layered, but it all melts together and it's solid plastic. And it even has a special little sound that it makes when you clang it together. So it has that feeling of solidity. Like it just, I don't know. It it really is different than any other 3D printer that I've ever used. Um, like I'm going to be using this to hold weight and I have complete confidence that this thing's going to be fine. Like I've tried to break some of them and I've broken some, you know, like if you, if you have a wire cutters or if you have something that can cut plastic, it'll cut it. Um, and like I've tried to bend one apart and I, I had a really hard time doing that. I actually didn't break it, but, um, but yeah, with enough weight, I'm sure you can break it. Anything that's plastic can be broken, but like just how strong this particular material is is kind of just shocking anyway um i did two parameter two, i did two perimeters on this project with um 200 micrometer offsets 175 i think 170 or 175 um on the hatch offset and i um i probably could have done three offsets now the offsets are really the crucial part about this if you try to center with the standard settings with 100% old powder you're going to get you're going to get a major issue the laser will go across and it will center that layer of old powder and i don't know if it's the voids that are in the powder or if, because the the new powder kind of has a little bit of smaller finer particulates in there and then that allows it to center better i don't exactly know why but they it curls almost immediately especially especially if you're anywhere outside of the the exact center of the bed the like old powder just curls there's not, nothing you can do about it so the only other opportunity is to say all right well let's put in two outlines right away and get that powder to be centered together and almost too heavy for it to curl and it'll just sort of sit there and uh, you could do two or three layers in fact the next time i do this i might do three layers well I um, I did two layers, 200 micrometers apart, and right away I could tell this was going to work. I mean, it, it was almost instantaneous. Now, I've seen other versions of, of what I've been doing with single outlines, and you can tell when a spot's not going to center well. Like, right when it lays down that layer, um, or right when it does that first outline, um, you'll see that it, it doesn't, like, lay down in the, the surrounding bed of powder. It'll just curl up on like a corner or on some part that that just doesn't get enough heat um and then you got to cancel it i mean by the time it finishes the outline and then it works its way back from the hatch by that time it's already pulled up so um so the two outlines are awesome because you can center it and then right before it can start to curl another one lays down right next to it just like a fraction of a millimeter right next to it so it gets a few extra a little bit of powder and then it holds it down really nice and then on top of that as that's centering and and, and already had finished centering you can see the hatch come by and then the hatch just ensures that it stays down so i'm leaning toward even doing three outlines in the next project just to see if that helps anything um the other benefit of using these outlines rather than like, like the standard settings is you get a much smoother surface. It's almost kind of astonishing. Like, if your outline is the hatch, you have to think about the hatch is lots of little crisscrossing lines. And they go to the end, but it's not perfectly smooth. And then if you use the, um, the outline as the outer, it has that nice circular. So if you have circular or like heart-shaped geometry, like in this particular model, it, it just... It centers really nicely. It's really clean.
There you go. Clean up done. These are the prints I just created. Um, this was a uh, like a fun little project, basically for my daughter's birthday party. Um, I uh, I'm trying to create a game where you have to use a hook and thought, well, where can I find a big hook that's not going to endanger people? And I made a my own plastic hook, which is lightweight, doesn't have a sharp edge, and has a heart on it, and you know, just something a little nicer than something you just get at like Home Depot. I made a couple extras because I'm not really, I wasn't really sure about the size, but I think this big one here is great. It's lightweight, super strong. Like you can just tell this is gonna hold up to whatever, and then they can use this for the game. And I just made a little formula in Katia to ensure that the center gravity was balanced. So I think this is gonna work great. Um, even the, if you look closely, you'll see like the profile is a heart too. It's hard to focus it, but yeah. Anyway. Showing some like fun stuff. I'm getting really comfortable with the machine now where I can just toss in any geometry now and fire it up, warm it up, you know, load up the model and then and then go with it. You know, it's 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 pretty like I don't know, it's just becoming a part of my life, I guess. Um the one thing though that was the innovation on here, you know, like this is just like a fun experimental little project here, but there was something important about it. And that's that I used 100% old powder, and you're not supposed to do that, but I'm just trying to figure out ways to use some of the old powder that I have. I can always just mix in new powder, but for something that's as, as like, you know, this isn't completely necessary, like this isn't one of my company jobs, so I thought I could fiddle around with it. So I changed some of the laser settings, did a denser ha hatch pattern, and then did a double perimeter, and... Uh, I was able to successfully print this with just 100% old powder. This is this is awesome. So I'm just gonna keep playing with it and see if I can get even better resolution. But the way I have now, this is outstanding.